today I just have a little gab and get ready with me video. I'm creating this look here that you see on my face. I am using this Makeup Revolution palette. It is the Iconic 2, which is supposed to be a dupe for the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. I don't have the Naked 2, but if you guys want to see how this little guy performs here, and you can already tell it's looking pretty good up here, <laughs> then just keep on watching. I've always had my eye on the Naked 2. I've always wanted it, but I just never wanted to fork out that kind of money for it. So we're going to see how this little guy performs today. Today, I can hardly talk already. So let's hop right in and I'll show you guys how I am playing around with this little guy today. So I do want to use a little bit of eyeshadow primer. This is just the Wet n Wild Fergie one, which is super duper affordable and it makes my eyeshadows not crease and makes them behave well. So it's affordable and it does what it needs to do. So it's awesome in my book. We're going into this one right here, which is a matte one. And of course, the sun is coming out and my lighting is going to be all funky. So excellent. And I'm just placing that up above my natural crease. I wish that this had a mirror. That would be great. I do really like this shade just as a shade. It's a nice taupey kind of gray toned transition shade. It's a little bit darker than I was thinking looking at it in the pan and how it turns out on my eyes, but I think it's still really good and I'm super duper fail. Fair. Fair. I always say fail because I mean to say pale and fair at the same time, but you know what I mean. So I did need a little bit of building up, but I think it's probably because of this brush that I'm using. I don't use this little guy a lot and I'm not too sure about how I like it, so it may or may not be the best choice to go into the crease with. It's kind of just really dense, so I don't think this brush was the best choice. I am going to go in and pull some of that same shadow on my lower lash line just to tie the two together. Now in with a fluffier brush just to buff out the edges of that upper shadow. Kind of doing my eyes in a funky order today. This third to last shade down here looks super duper pretty, so I want to put that on my lid. That's such a pretty shade. I really, really like that color. Just kind of focusing it on the outer half, maybe two thirds of the eye. For the inner third of the lid, I want to go in with this lighter, kind of a, not quite a champagne-y color, but maybe just a little bit darker than a champagne. Just kind of popping that in the inner third, the space that I didn't put that third to last shade. Just kind of overlapping a little bit to kind of blend those two there. So far, I'm really digging this palette. Next, I'm just going to pop into the second to last, the second to darkest shade, and I'm going to place that in the outer V to add a little bit of dimension out here. It definitely adds dimension, but it's not as intense and dark as a black, so I really, really like that color. I am super happy that I came across this palette last night. I do want to add just a little bit more something to my lower lash line, so I'm going to go back into that shade that I used to darken up the outer V, and I'm going to place that on my lower lash line and just kind of connect the two. I really want to focus it on this outer section right here, and then just kind of bring it up to harmonize with the upper lid shadows too. Then I'm going to go in with just a little tiny touch of the black just to darken up the outer V. Once again, really careful because that looks like a very intense black. <laughs> yeah, that black is pretty heavy duty, so you got to be careful with it. Just kind of placing, kind of patting that down, and then going back in with the brush that I used to place the second darkest shade, I wish that these shades had names or I knew the naked two names that I could use for them, but just blending that outer corner once again. And going in with a fluffy brush just to blend along the edges. So I think that's about it with the shadows and those look awesome. I'm very impressed with those. So if they can hold their color and not crease throughout the day, that's excellent. I'm just going to go in and line my waterline and tightline with Urban Decay's black velvet pencil. And I'm actually going to go back into the black to line my upper lash line to give a really nice smoky smudgy kind of look up top here without looking like 
straight up liner, just a little bit of depth along the lashes. Now I do have a little bit of fallout, definitely nothing crazy. So I'm just gonna wipe that away. And I'm gonna curl my lashes and apply my Revlon Ultimate All-in-One Mascara, which is my latest favorite mascara. I've really just been totally enjoying using this stuff lately. It's great for both the upper and lower lashes, which is really hard for me to find a mascara that I like for both because I always like to do my lower lashes first. Otherwise, while I'm looking up like this to do them, my lashes on top will totally ruin all my eyeshadow. So always do the lower lashes first. That's just my preference. A lot of ladies can figure it out and not make a mess <laughs> by doing their lashes in the opposite order as me. I'm just really bad at doing my lower lashes apparently. And this brush is just so tiny, but it doesn't take like an, a ridiculous amount of time to coat all my lashes, even though it is smaller than your traditional brush. It just works awesome. I just love it. So those are the eyes finished. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the lips just yet. I can't decide, so I'm gonna move on to the face so I can have a little moment to think about it. I'm gonna go in with this fancy little Maybelline Master Contour in the light to medium shade. They also have a darker one, but this one, I am pale and fair, so as you guys know, I need to use a lighter contour and a lighter blush, all that good stuff, so. Just using the contour, contouring out the cheeks. This is a little more rosy toned. It's cool toned and it's almost not quite suitable as a contour color because it is so cool and rosy. It almost has a pinkish hue to it sometimes. So it's kind of borderline. Some people might not like it. I really think it's flattering and I like it mostly as long as you don't go too heavy and crazy with it. But just FYI, this little set here is uh, probably something that you need to try and you may or may not totally like the way that the colors suit you. I know that a lot of fair skin ladies do like a cool toned contour so in that way it's pretty nice because they can be difficult to come by in, in the drugstore. I'm also going to use the blush in here. Because it is a very natural flush of color it's nothing too crazy. I'm gonna fill in my beauty marks with my Milani felt tip pen, just because that's what I like to do. And then I do want a highlight today and I want something kind of intense. So I'm gonna go with Mary Luminizer, which is a very intense, but it's so pretty. Just want a little extra something today. And since it's still technically winter time, I can get away with highlighting like I want to because in the summertime my skin gets way too oily to use any kind of highlighter. For an under brow highlight, I'm just going to take my regular everyday face powder, just kind of pat that along just to kind of blend out the edges and make it look a little more seamless up there. I don't know, even just this little tiny step of adding your face powder underneath your brow can make a big difference in looking like you've totally completed your eyes. Now I do wanna go back in and use this third shade here, which is, which is a champagne-y color. And I'm gonna take that on the inner corners of my eyes just to brighten everything up. That's a very pigmented shade. Just wanna put that out there. <laughs> That's a little bit intense. Not too intense, of course, but just so you know, it actually packs a punch. So the eyes are done, the face is done, and now I have to decide on the lips and I don't know what to do. <laughs> I really want to use these new lip liners from NYX, the slide on, glide on, all that kind of good stuff lip liners because I just got it last night and I really want to try it out. But I also got this liquid lipstick from Makeup Revolution that I really want to try out too. So I don't know what to do. I feel like the pink might kind of clash with my burgundy kind of top. But I don't want to do a nude that's like too boring. I just have like a smoky eye and the nude lips. That's just too traditional. I need something a little more exciting. All right, I decided on the liner. So we're going to go in with, what is this one called? Summer Tees from NYX, as well as Indie Flick, the matte lipstick. I 
those two colors match like perfectly. So here's the look for today. I must say I am very impressed with this palette. I haven't even, I didn't even go in and swatch these before I started playing with it. So to see a look that comes out just so perfectly, I'm very, very happy with it. This is awesome. I might have to go pick up the other ones. I'm very, very impressed with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did like it. Let me know if you want me to go get the other palettes and show you some looks with those. Like I said, I don't have the naked palettes to compare them to, but just with this first one here, I'm super duper impressed. Very happy with this purchase. I want to say it was like seven bucks or something. Let me go find the receipt. Yeah, $7 palette. That was an, that's even awesomer. <laughs> that's pretty awesome.